You're watching Drive the Lightning, the positively charged EV channel. Yes, and we are positively charged up to have with us Jeff, the Ninjaneer, from his YouTube channel. Uh, Jeff, we've been following you since you started your channel, but recently you've had to take on some, so, some things that have come out in the media about the Aptera Solar Charged Electric Vehicle that either are just wrong, uh, ill-informed, or just you disagree with them. And we want to get your thoughts a little bit deeper uh, for our audience to see. Is that going to be okay? Yeah, sure. Uh, you should probably know I stole some clips from your channel without your permission. Oh, so I actually encourage that because it helps spread the information around the internet. My goal is to bring as many people uh, with good messages up as I can. So yeah, rising tide and all that. Okay, so we won't call it stealing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only difference. We're just going to rename it something like friend friendly sharing. Creative leveraging. Creative leveraging. Yes. Wow. <laughs> okay. Hey, I'm just going to get right to the clip. So I'm going to set this first one up. Now this is from uh, someone that we both appreciate uh, as a YouTube channel. That's the Transport Evolved YouTube channel with Nikki. She had this to say, and then I want your opinion. Sure. And if you ask me personally, if I think I'll actually ever own an Aptera, well, I don't want to say this. I think I probably have to answer no. Okay, so that's our first clip. She was saying in her video that, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure where it came from, but she was saying that with the difficult situation, uh, the difficult governmental situation, other things that she said she does not think she'll ever see an Aptera. And you disagree. Let's hear your thoughts, Jeff. Right. So generally speaking, I do believe that she had a lot of really strong and fair points about where we are in the market as uh, as a whole. Like the, the U.S. is going through, I guess, a... a uh, a hater phase for EVs and uh, the administration is not helping. And like, there's, there's a lot going on in the ecosystem that could be a detriment to Aptera. But what I believe and what have I have seen over the course of many, many years of watching uh, markets and things like that, uh, especially smaller corporations and, and, and companies just getting started is there's always those weird uh, abstract uh unusual, unexpected things that happen and how you react to those things as a company makes or breaks your future. And so uh, even Aptera up to this point has seen no fewer than four different things that could have wiped them out as a company. And yet, and still they stuck around and they have survived just because of the fact that they had a strategy that got them through. Um, anybody that can take out, take on a single, uh, company ending event and survive is something remarkable. But yeah, they've been through more than one and have come out uh, stronger each time. Um, and so I, I believe that a company like that with tenacity like that has no other option but to make it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, interesting, Jeff, as you're talking, I'm thinking about what you're saying. And if you look at the, the biggest companies now that are out there, Apple, um, Tesla, Amazon, Google or Alphabet, rather. These all came from radical ideas. They all came from radical ideas, just like the Aptera is a radical idea. And when they make it, man, they really make it. Absolutely. You know? So, yeah, cool. Great. Th <clears throat> thanks for sharing your thoughts on that one. I'm going to load sure. up an another clip here. Now, this was right after Aptera made their road trip video, and mm -hmm. they shared some preliminary numbers of what they got for uh, range, for example. Right. Uh, how many, what was it, uh, miles per kilowatt they got, stuff like that. And then there was a quick response from some YouTubers saying that, hey, this wasn't accurate because of this or this and this. Uh, my thought was that Aptera never said it was 100% accurate test. Mm -hmm. It was just what we found today. But let me show you this clip, and then I want your reaction to this. Another take for this situation was a viscerally bad one. They decided that they were going to cherry pick one thing about this ride and make the video about that and say things like oh there's this uh going downhill makes you know makes all of their numbers in incredulous or or not valid or whatever like i couldn't even get through the full video i was so bothered by it but long story short he took one thing and cherry picked it and he didn't take the time to make sure that he did a little bit of math even even the tiniest tiniest little bit of math Okay, so this was about an out-of-spec bits video. It's one of the, 
Kyle, of course, from Out of Spec Reviews, has a couple sub channels, I think, and this is one of them, like a podcast style. And they were talking, and I, like you, could not get through the whole video. I watched maybe five minutes, and it was like they they, they compared Aptera to Nikola, mm -hmm. you know, the, the truck where the CEO went to prison. And I was like, what are you talking about? Right. No offense to them, but I didn't get it. So let's let's hear your let's hear more of your take, Jeff. So the thing that I was talking about that they decided to cherry pick was the fact that the Aptera happened to be going downhill for a large portion of this road trip. And what made that strange to me was another thing that they mentioned that, that the Aptera team mentioned at the start of this video was the Aptera was also like heavier. Um, there were different rolling resistance numbers than what production was going to be. They had all sorts of little uh, details that they explained at the beginning. And then they also like, I think the most important thing that they mentioned was this is not an actual test. This is just us shooting around, like just going on a road trip to see what we get so we can improve. For some reason, not just out of spec, but a whole bunch of others took that as, oh, this is their official, this is the thing, this is it. And it's like, I, there was a there was a disconnect that not only did Aptera sufficiently explain, but for some reason, people just outright ignored it. And I was just trying to parse the reasons why they ignored the fact that they told us that this was not official numbers. Yeah, but I know. don't understand purposely running a startup into the ground without, like, if you're going to call yourself a reporter, like some of these YouTubers do, I don't, some of them do, well, then you should report factual stuff if you're a reporter. And, yeah. uh, but just, just to say some of the things they were saying, I just thought it was, I'm glad you took it on and, and, and you talked about it. Um, I am possibly one of the most detail oriented people that I know. Uh, so I think it is really important to get those little things right. And when I get those things wrong, like I've, I've been wrong a lot on my channel and I've talked about those things as they happen, because I know that if I don't, it's going to bother me and I'm going to lose sleep at night. So it's like, I have to talk about this stuff and I can't be inaccurate or, uh, not factual because it, it, it actually physically hurts me. So like when I see other people doing that, it's like, um, how how do you do that? Like, I need to know how you do make that work. So maybe I can get to sleep when I know I've made a mistake in the video and I have to go back next week and do it. Yeah. Anyway, it's, I still don't understand it. I think that they just saw this one aspect of the situation and decided to expand on that aspect. And maybe because uh, the person that brought this to Kyle's attention saw red and was upset about it, he might not have caught all the details. And when he didn't catch all the details, he just vented about it. And they were like, you know what? This is a perfect thing for the little, the, 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 the podcast that we're doing. So I'm, that's what I think happened, but yeah, yeah it's yeah. wild. Yeah. Sarah and I, as a, we're mostly in a, um, probably more of an opinion channel than anything, but we only share positive opinions. You know, the old adage, if you don't have something nice to say, I would hate to say something negative about any company or any YouTuber, that's why I'm being careful today. And in my opinion, and if I'm wrong, I'm hurting somebody for no reason. I just won't do it. I'll share a, a positive opinion and I might be wrong. And what harm did I do? I just shared a little bit of my positive opinion. So I, I guess you and I view diff things differently ourselves, but mm. we both agree on this one. We should be careful what we share if it can hurt another com a company you know, or a person for that matter. Absolutely. Okay, this last one's a doozy. Uh, this last clip I want to play has to deal with a TV channel out of uh, Australia that uh, actually got into quite a little uh, situation with the electric Viking, Sam Evans there. Mm -hmm. And I I'm just going to let the clip speak for itself and then we'll get your opinion. Bro, if there was ever a, a master class on uh, manipulation and uh, uh, fear mongering and, and what have you, this is it, man. So let's hear about the masterclass on fear mongering, Jeff. What what's going on in this clip? So I actually sat through this whole thing not not because it was good or had any like uh, actual like oh this is uh, good factual based evidence. It was because I was awestruck by just how how thoroughly and meticulously they crafted this story. It was like it was from a media list. Um, 
media standpoint, from a journalistic standpoint, it was fascinating how well they spun the story. But every single thing that I looked up afterwards, like uh, as the videos play, and, and this is what I do for my news videos and things like that, I will take the video that I'm listening to and then I will like little do little Google searches while the video is going. And the very first point that they made was wrong. And I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> here, here we go. Like the sting music gave me an indication, but it wasn't until I Googled that first like little little uh, factoid that they shared that I was like, OK, I can tell where this is going. And the idea behind their clip, as I understood what they're trying to do is paint all EV battery production as terrible. It's killing people, pointing the finger at some big companies in the space. And uh, yeah, I thought I didn't watch the whole thing. I watched Sam Evans take on it, the Vikings take on it. And I was like, whoa. And then when I saw what you did, I watched, of course, your whole video. And I thought, man, what is going on? So again, it, you took it on. And I appreciate that. The problem with videos like that and companies like that, from my I, my thoughts, mm -hmm. is that they're fast and they're big. So they get it out there quick. They get out there to a lot of people. And once it's out there, it's awfully hard to debunk it because you can't get into the ears and eyes of those who have already accepted it and they'll just run with it. So I'm glad yeah. you spoke up. Absolutely. So on that note, uh, this is dipping the my toes into the political waters again. And I apologize to the viewers that are abhorrent to that situation. But uh, there was a politician that uh, recently said that lies get out and spread around the world before truth can even put on their shoes, lace up their shoes. And this is a fantastic example of that because uh, I don't know if you remember the whole cobalt situation when um, oh, yeah. the, the cobalt mines and things were coming under scrutiny. Uh, there was a very similar piece by a different news company that went over the same issues and ironically went to uh, the worst. I think what they did was they went to the worst cobalt mine that they could find and did not re research whether or not that cobalt was coming out and being used for EVs or not. So they made very similar mistakes to this particular video. So it was like, in my head, it was just cobalt 2.0 on nickel. And so, yeah, it was, it was an interesting uh, dichotomy. In fact, I think one of these days I'll email you that uh, video so you can see how similar they were, but it was, yeah, basically cobalt 2.0. And um, yeah, oh, Sidebar, the stainless steel that they make with that cobalt is used in everything. Like oh, that really? was one of the things that I was uh, kind of disturbed by when it came to actually fact checking this this video. There would have been a better video made about how much stuff this nickel actually ends up in if they had not focused on EVs. Uh, the front cover of your dishwasher, if it's stainless steel, then wow. it probably came from this mine. Uh, if you're uh, silverware was uh, produced and is made of stainless steel, that stainless steel was probably made with nickel from that mine. So that mine is 50 some odd percent of the total uh, nickel market. And it is the most atrocious working conditions. That was one of the things that I made sure to put in my video is that for all the foolishness that that video had to offer, the one thing that they said that was really truly and deeply disturbing was how terrible the conditions were for the people at this factory. So yeah, if nothing else they got right, that was right. And it, mm. yeah, it was cringy. Like it, it hurt me l watching that happen to those people. Yeah. So it's like they found a, a big pile of dog poo on their yard, mm -hmm. but they didn't investigate which dog it really came from. They just decided it was the neighbor's dog and made all kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. So that's what they found. They found a real story, like you're saying, a real problem, something that should have been brought to light. But it seems like an agenda. They wanted to point that to electric vehicles for whatever reason is their own mm -hmm. instead of getting the facts out, which would really implicate all of us. Yeah, it sounds like when I go through my house, it's like, oh, I'm part of that. Yeah, it's yeah. a much more powerful message and helps people be more introspective when you uh, let them know that, hey, even the stuff that you think is innocuous could have some sort of nefarious ties and you have to uh, evaluate those kinds of things when you make purchases. It's, they had the opportunity to make us all smarter buyers and they ignored it basically. Yeah, wow. Thank you members for keeping the wheels churning on the Drive the Lightning positively charged EV channel. Yes, and thank you for the super thanks we got recently. We really appreciate you. 
And last but not least, thank you guys all so much for buying Sarah coffee. Yes, a happy Sarah means a happy Chad. Hey, Jeff, thanks for being here. Thanks for setting the record uh, correctly for fact checking the fact checkers. We appreciate all of you, everything you do and, of course, your channel. And we want everybody to do the youtube things, as you say on your channel, the thumbs up, the likes, the share on both of our channels. Please help yes, us please. get uh, videos like this to more people.